It's time to start. We've also formed a quorum, so I call the meeting to order. Mr. James Toe, four minutes. Mr. Chairman, please switch on the microphone, Mr. James Toe. Chair, I would like to follow up on my question in the first round. If the administration is being sincere in the public consultation, it would not have been expected that you would try to preempt the outcome. According to the administration, it is said that uh, unfair competition is a uh, is the issue. But then, for the eight UGC universities, they have more resources. They can be given more resources to better their programs. In this way, it means that you can you would be discriminating against um, better run programs. Or it could also be said that you give more resources to better run programs. Currently, there hasn't been any extensive consultation, and yet you have made up your mind, and your policy is very biased. So I just want to know if the administration can reconsider the case. I'm sure you don't need me to teach you how to refine the proposal. Either you can revise your paper and extend the coverage to the HUGC funded universities. I think it's up to the administration to say so and can still be acceptable. There's still time to do so. Another point that I want to make is that if it is said that within a very short period of time you are coming back to get funding approval because there will be still another one billion dollars available if you promise to come again quickly to cover the eight UGC universities as well, then it would have been better. So perhaps the first option is better. Revise the paper so that you give as many choices as possible to the students. Now, Mrs. Carrie Lam would be regarded as CY Learn 2.0 because it seems that once she has made up her mind, that's the truth, and she can go ahead and she doesn't have to care about anybody's opinions, just like the case of the Paris Museum, because that's her personality. She's the best. She's cleverest. So perhaps uh, she has already made up her mind on many different policies, and she's not going to take anybody's advice. Now, perhaps uh, you should provide resources to the students in the short run, allow them to make their own choices, and then you come back to say that uh, you may want to revise the proposals. Now, the C has been in her post for just a dozen of days, and yet it seems that she's uh, trying to show that she's really, really clever. It appears to us that she's not going to listen to the public, and she's not going to pay attention to the Democrats. And the Democrats uh, represent a large sector of the community. How come that she can still claim that she would like to narrow the gap and would like to have a harmonious society? Let's not talk about politics. At least on the policy front, you have to narrow the difference. Secretary, when the CE dropped such proposals, in fact, she has uh, consulted many stakeholders, including the eight UGC funded universities. We've talked to the heads of the eight universities, and they didn't uh, disagree with us. So we did carry out consultation. We did talk to the uh, institutions to be affected. And in general terms, they haven't expressed any dissatisfaction. All right, uh, Mr. Edgeju, three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Chair, just now you have said that somebody has asked the question more than 30 times. That is whether the HUGC funded universities should be covered as well. You said that um, nothing more can be obtained by having more questions and answers along this line. Had Dr. Edward Yu 
been present today, you would not have said so with so much self-confidence. Do you recall that in relation to the Kaitak Sports Park, the honorable member exposed the administration's problem, that is, for the so-called DBO models cited by the government, all of them had the capital input from the conglomerates. But in the government's case, the government has to pay for it. Now, it is said that it is a matter of a philosophical DBO. And then again, on the matter of South Island Line, it was again Dr. Yu that um, the that exposed the government's uh, falsity in the calculations of the sums. And um, so by reinterpreting the basic law, some lawmakers have been removed. They have removed lawmakers who are capable of exposing the problems of the administration. Now we are talking about education expenditure. On behalf of Dr. Yu, I would like to ask this question. I think before he was disqualified, he had asked this question. It's a simple one. Now, just assuming that the administration is doing something to penalize the age universities, just assuming for a moment that the direction is fine, it is not wrong, you may penalize the universities, but what about students? Why are they also penalized? Can you not still give $30,000 to the students? They can still enroll with the self-financed programs of the eight universities. And once what the eight universities uh, have got the uh, students on board, then the universities should cough up $30,000 each, and then in this way, you can still do what you want, that is to penalize the universities. I ask this on behalf of Dr. Edward Yu. Secretary, thank you, Chair. As to the proposal uh, made by Mr. Chu, uh, this is the first time that we hear about it. I think we need time to enable the universities to think about it. Would you agree with me that you, it is tantamount to punishing the students? Well, your time is up. You talked about exposing the truth, etc. I think to allow the student, uh, the public, uh, well, what was being said, I have to point out that the administration has never agreed uh, to such an accusation. Uh, administration, thank you, Chair. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to clarify. We just want to say that when we assist members in scrutinizing our funding of proposals, we'll do our utmost to provide uh, complete and accurate information. Your time is up. Mr. Abraham Shek. Mr. Abraham Shek, five minutes. I support the proposal. It may not be satisfying everybody on all fronts, but then it is still a good thing to give some money to those needy students. For student, uh, for lawmakers across the f uh, chamber, uh, I don't think their idea is wrong. You are talking about money following the student. So, sort of, uh, you would like to give the choice to the students, let them exercise their free will. So, it's a matter of like uh, practicing what uh, Freeman has been advocating. It is something good. Um, your idea is right. However, usually you try to apply the dollar sign to look at educational issues. Now you say that for the uh, UGC funded students, it seems that they are getting double benefits. But I don't think you should address the point in such a way. I don't think we should talk about the benefits. Uh, in fact, by giving more subsidies to the students, they can learn more, and then the, st the society as a whole can benefit. I urge you to abandon your perspective. We are here to nurture our talents. Now, we are trying to spend money, and we have also got $1.4 billion available. 
please not block um, the proposal so the students can get $30,000 each. Now, in October, we're going to have the policy address, and perhaps that's the moment when we can extend the scope to cover the eight UGC universities. Uh, it is important to allow students um, the freedom to make up their uh, choices. Hong Kong is an affluent society, and yet the student number has been kept at 15,000. The administration has not allowed the number to be increased, and therefore we have got so many problems. Had we been uh, offering 20,000, 30,000 places to the eligible students, we won't have to face this problem. We have got so much surplus. Why are you making so much saving? You shouldn't leave it in the hands of the UGC alone. Now, if it is said that the heads of the eight universities have said that uh, they have got enough, but then you should have asked the students. Now, I think the member's request is reasonable, but at the same time, they shouldn't be blocking this funding proposal. I hope the administration uh, have heard their uh, request, and I hope that the administration uh, will listen to the community and do what is needed at this moment. Secretary, let me give a brief reply. We are not talking about double benefits. That's not our point of consideration. As I have said, for the higher education sector, we do have a policy. That is, we have a self-funded sector, and we have also got a self-financing sector. And in the long term, we need to strike a balance between the two sectors. Now, today, members have told us what they think. I can understand their principles. As I have said on other occasions as well, in the future, we will reveal the role of the self-financing sector and their comments today will also be considered. As to the request to extend uh, the proposal to the funded uh, places as well, I think the impact would be too huge. Whatever we do will have an impact on somebody, on something else. But then if the impact is for the long-term benefit of Hong Kong, then it is a positive impact. Please, please don't be so bureaucratic. Don't Follow the example of your last term government and say that you have made up your mind and so be it. Uh, Mr. Young, I've known you for a long period of time. Uh, I don't think you are that sort of person. Yes, of course, there's no uh, going back at this moment and you can only look forward, but make sure that you bear in mind the well being of the students and they should be given the opportunity to try to uh, make their own decisions. Now, for the um, students, whether they have a subvented place or not, I think uh, it is important for them to exercise their freedom to make a choice. Uh, we should not be making choices for them. You have good intentions. Why would you want to have a bad outcome? Because what you're doing would jeopardize their ability to exercise their freedom to make a choice. Mr. Ben Chen, it is said that the current term government doesn't listen to the people. But in fact, the government has been in place for just two weeks, and yet we have got this very important proposal. If you don't call this listening to the people, what is? Now, the educational sector has been waiting eagerly for the approval of the proposal. In particular, many teachers uh, hope that this will be approved. Of course, many people, including many students, who say that the Education Bureau can, could or could have done better. Now, we have only been told about this proposal for a dozen of hours. You can't expect them to make changes instantly. Why don't we pass the uh, proposal first? And then if you have got good proposals, let's go back to the Education Panel and we can further negotiations. Now, I don't think you should blocking today's meeting. We've spent so many hours on this. Now, in the queue, we have got the expansion of the operating theater of the Truman Hospital. It is very, very important. It's, it's a matter of life and death. So um, we are already in the third session. I hope that uh, you can try to pass the paper and allow the OT of Truman 
be uh, approved. Now you have been filibustering. You are still dwelling on the same point. Do you expect that uh, in the light of the government's clear position that you can get your will? I think it's better for us to defer your idea to an education panel meeting. Let's be rational. Pass this proposal today first. We are all here to solve problems. We have still got eight items on the agenda. Both the administration and lawmakers would like to endorse them. They are livelihood issues. You always say that we need to give priority to livelihood issues, and we have livelihood issues. A lot of works projects have been sort of uh, taken out. Now, what about those on the agenda today? What about Tumen Hospital? Last year, we hope that this will be done this year. Now, if you allow this to drag on for another six months, it means that Tun Moon residents, Yunnong residents, have to wait for another six months before they get to their turn to have a surgery. Now, currently, there are only 10 uh, rooms in the operating theater. Um, they need 30. And then for radio, uh, radiography, uh, again, they need to boost their service. And that's part of the uh, proposal for Tun Moon. So after this round of questions, please, please move ahead to the voting. Dr. Zhang, thank you, Chair. I think I'm very rational, and what I say and what I've been saying uh, is of much depth, and so I don't think what Mr. Ben Chen said had anything to do with us. I will still talk about the uh, question of um, the thirty thousand dollars. I think the administration hasn't prepared for my question. Uh, now, for the thirty thousand dollar sum, well, you say that it is for the higher education sector, and then new students and existing students will be covered. So my question is: Has the administration assessed the number of students? Who will be withdrawing from the existing programs, leaving from the existing programs, and what is the administrative cost to be incurred? Now you haven't included such a uh, figure. That's my first question. That is, I want to know about the effect. Existing students may think that it is worth the while, and they may think that it's better to move to another program next year. Um, Mr. Chairman, do you understand my question? Because in the coming academic year, for each program covered by the proposal, there will be a matter of reduction of thirty dollars, um, thirty thousand dollars. So, have you assessed the number of students uh, withdrawing from the existing programs? And my second question is: There will be two effects as a result of this proposal. First of all, students don't have to pay so much if they go to the self-financing sector. Has the administration looked at this issue? That is, whether the existing self-financing institutions can cope with a drastic increase in the number of students. What about administrative costs? What about workload of the teaching staff? And what about all the other support facilities? Okay. So, by providing a thirty thousand dollars subsidy per student, would you increase the burden of the self-financing institutions, and um, that would result in adverse effects? And uh, the third question relates to other members' questions about the associate degree programs and the eight UGC-funded institutions. I'm using your logic quite reluctantly. Because of competition in the market, the self finance programs run by the eight universities would need to ha see their fees being cut so as to maintain a competitive edge. Because the student intake has continued to decline. I'm talking about the uh, tertiary institutions. They need to cut the fees so as to attract more students. At the same time, there could be students who originally would uh, opt for these programs, but because of the government subsidy, they would uh, opt for something else. So have you taken this into account? The market situation and the community colleges, the programs operated by the eight universities, and whether uh, there will be any pressure on the fees. 
because you talked about encouraging competition in the market. I suppose this is not just a, a statement. It should be backed by um, data. Secretary, I did not say that we want to create competition in the market. The competition already exists in the market or in the sector. To project how many students would be giving up on the existing programs to opt for the uh, subsidized self finance programs, well, we don't think that the figure would be substantial. Well, that's your belief, but do you understand my question? That, that means nobody understands how effective it will be. Dr. Priscilla Leung. Thank you, Chairman. We've been able to discuss this item so uh, quickly at the Finance Committee meeting because we have support from members from different sectors. And I also teach in university. I am also from the education sector. I understand that uh, this is uh, an issue close not only to the heart of members of the education sector, but to other members as well. And uh, this is a result of the good effort of members across the political spectrum. About the issues raised, I don't think that um, you'll face opposition because at least you should, f um, you should provide a subsidy. It's better than nothing. But I don't think the amount is sufficient. For example, $5,000 for students pursuing studies in the mainland, they have um, a very high inflation rate, and I think the amount should also be increased to $30,000. The other issue has to do with associate degree programs. I don't think we have time to discuss that or for you to make a change today. However, you can ponder this issue. As far as the policy is concerned, and before um, setting a definitive tone, tone, uh, tone on uh, higher education policies, you can consider whether those who fail to get a subsidized place can benefit from your policy. At the same time, I agree that in relation to the UGC-funded uh, universities and the self-financed places, operated by these universities. In some way, it's true that subsidy has already been provided, but students don't directly benefit from the subsidy. I hope that uh, you can address this concern. And when you consulted organizations in pre preparing this paper, you I hope that in the next consultation exercise, you could consult parents and employers, and I'm not just referring to employees in the education sector. You should consider uh, the whole of the community, where we should invest our resources to cope with manpower development in Hong Kong in the coming decade. We should diversify our um, workforce apart from, well, uh, uh, and apart from the subsidy, we should also do something about uh, life and career planning. The other point is that it's about student suicide. Uh, more resources should be provided, uh, providing school-based point-to-point support. And in terms of the establishment, you should think deeper. Because even after somebody acquires a, 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 an academic degree, uh, one's mindset may be so weak as to commit suicide. So you need to increase their mental uh, strength and resilience against pre pressure. I think that this is even more important than uh, just thinking about academic degrees. Well, Secretary, you'll be conducting another round of consultation soon. Are you going to widen the scope of consultation and to consult those who have been left out in the last consultation exercise, be it diploma or associate degree courses or diploma courses? You need to find out well, which of these courses will be popular in the market and which will be um, meeting the market's demand. because. Uh, we need somebody who uh, who has knowledge in history and in uh, so sociology as well to promote social development. Secretary, if the proposal is related to parents and employers, of course we will consult the, uh, them appropriate as appropriate. Ms. Kinyun. 
chairman this morning, I mentioned that uh, much of the concept of this proposal has come from the education sector. Now, because of the judgment handed down by the court, uh, the progress has been delayed, and we know that members have received views from a lot of um, organizations from the education sector, include, including the um, Association of Aided uh, Secondary Schools and Primary Schools, and also uh, uh, association of school principals and um, my teachers union also uh, wrote to us at least we have received three letters from them it shows that the education sector is keenly looking forward to ha um, the passage of this proposal now we support this funding uh, application, but at the same time there is a strong consensus fortune the education sector for the f funding allocation to continue in the future because at present it is not sufficient it is only put in place to deal with contingencies for example the establish the teaching po establishment uh, will be increased to uh, 0 0.1 but the consensus of the sector is to increase it uh, by 0 0.3 in relation to the teacher to class ratio tc ratio as for mainstream schools they would like to have a send code that is special educational needs coordinator and sh it should not be a regular post it should be uh, a post of a higher rank uh, at the level of a coordinator and uh, for the thirty thousand dollar subsidy as mentioned this morning we hope that other students left out of the scope can be uh, assisted as well and uh, point number four it it's not related to this funding application, but in Mrs. Kerry Lam's election manifesto, she placed much emphasis on the uh, pay scale for kindergarten teachers. We hope that this issue can be properly dealt with in future. I still have a number of questions to ask, but I've already mentioned the points related to this funding application, which have not been fully addressed. I hope that the administration can respond to my uh, questions and requests. Secretary, well, Mr. Ip's points have been repeated today, and I have responded to these points. And as mentioned before, we will carefully consider uh, some of these suggestions in the long term. And as set out the paper, we're going to uh, follow the uh, course set out. Mr. Elvin Young, three minutes. Thank you. I'd like to follow up on the issue of Sanko. The there will be a, um, there will be the post of Sanko for schools all over Hong Kong. I want to know whether there are resources to meet this demand because it is not just a regular teaching post. The post holder should have knowledge of uh, special education. I don't know whether Secretary has the relevant information available. In relation to Sanko, we um, implemented a pilot scheme with the funding provided by the CCF because previously when we discussed with the community and with members, we often ask this question, what is the work of Sanko, what qualifications should be required, and what training is necessary? Well, all along, we haven't been able to um, answer these questions clearly. We implemented the pilot scheme uh, with a view to clarify the issues mentioned. So. We have provided professional training to Senkos under the pilot scheme, um, including the engagement of uh, an expert in the UK. And I recall on, uh, there were two training programs um, lasting for a few days um, because in the UK, Senko has been put in place for quite a long time. And uh, the expert explains to local teachers the relevant duties 
And on this occasion, we're talking about a program lasting for three years, such that what the post holder would receive continuous training. And there will also be exchanges and mutual support so as to give full play to the role of Senko. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to follow up on the issue of engaging UK experts to uh, provide training. I want to know whether this is a long-term arrangement or whether this will only be done sporadically and training will not be provided uh, regularly. Because, say, in the middle of a school year, if um, the post holder leaves the post and another teacher comes on stream, how would you provide training to the new teacher? This is a pilot scheme, and we have engaged the expert for three years. And uh, every six months, the expert will be coming to Hong Kong to provide training to Senkos. Uh, we can also um, try to source the sufficient uh, training programs of Senko in Hong Kong, but this will be something in the long term. We have spent seven hours on this item. For members who have not asked questions and wish to ask questions, please come down and ask your questions as soon as possible. Ms. Claudia Moore, just now Mr. Ben Chen criticized that it's unreasonable to ask the administration to amend the paper in just a few hours. But it's not just a few hours. Last week, well, I mean, at least last week, we have been discussing the proposal. So, Mr. Ban Chen, you need to be clear. We, uh, You need to pronounce it correctly. We're talking about a livelihood issue. Um, Mr. Abraham Shek, how, on the other hand, was being quite fair. Well, let's take it that you cannot do anything about um, the provision of subsidy to the self-finance courses operated by the eight, university, eight UGC-funded universities. If you say that um, this cannot be done at the moment, then Mr. Abraham Shek's suggestion is that uh, in the policy address to be delivered in October, you can do something about that. Can you give this undertaking? Just now, you also mentioned places for international students. And those students could be just mainland students in disguise, uh, um, uh, pretending to be international students. But let's take it th that they are non-Hong Kong students. Even without subsidy. There would, uh, as long as the places are available, there would be local students who would be willing to uh, fork up money to um, start to take up these courses. Would you consider releasing these places? As I understand, when the universities enroll international students, they have not um, excluded local students. If local students wish to enro be enrolled in uh, self-finance courses, the majority of them could get a place. Well, I think that uh, is just um, uh, it's just rhetorics that uh, you're using. You have the the pool of uh, this uh, scale. You said that there is no difficulty in uh, enrollment, but in fact, there is a limit as to the number of places. Chairman, I need to clarify facts because for subsidized places in self finance or self finance programs, um, the universities can enroll an extra twenty percent of uh, extra an extra twenty percent. And for the uh, additional places, they can come under self finance courses. And as I understand, lack of places is not the reason why these students are not enrolled in the programs. How about this uh, undertaking in the policy address in October, Mr. Ray Chen? Well, just now, Mr. Abraham Shek uh, pointed out this issue. In fact, the pro-establishment camp could just uh, be the voting machine and pass the proposal. But he identified the problem, and he hoped that Mrs. Carrie Lam could face up to the issues. For the self-finance institutions, 
well, competition already exists in the sector, but that is exactly the problem. If the courses operated by these self-financed institutions are not attractive enough uh, under the market mechanism, they will be phased out. But now you're providing a $30,000 $30, subsidy to boost their edge, whereas for the self-financed uh, undergraduate or even doctorate degree courses, their competitive edge would be reduced. I've been told by students that if subsidy can be provided to I mean, if there are self-financed courses operated by both the eight universities and the other self-financed institutions, then the, for the sake of the $30,000, um, the student might choose uh, the course run by the self-financed institutions. But if he has a particular course in mind, say music education, there is no such course run by the uh, self-financed institutions. So you're totally neglecting the interests and aspirations of students. But in fact, you still have time, or at least you can address the uh, relevant issues in the policy address. Chairman, I reiterate that as far as our policy is concerned, well, I'm talking about those who fail to get a subsidy. Well, Mr. Chen referred to uh, some students who are unable to uh, cover their fees. Well, we do have a grant loan scheme to subsidize the students' studies. As to whether we can include this in the upcoming policy address, it is difficult for me to say what will be included in the policy address. I can only stress that um, the issues raised by members will be considered. Well, how about uh, rent subsidy? You say that if you provide rent subsidy, um, the landlords will uh, increase the rent. What about providing the $30,000 subsidy? Will the universities then raise their, their course fees? Um, you say that this will be packed to the consumer price index, but how are you going to monitor, monitor the situation? Let's say if it exceeds, the, the hike exceeds the uh, CCPI, we will require justification from them um, to explain the escalation of cost and whether whether the increase in uh, cost would bring benefit to the um, teaching and learning. Dr. Chen Shung Tai, four minutes. Thank you. I'd like to follow up on Mr. Ray Chan's question about the thirty thousand dollars. Your suggestion is that you're going to monitor the um, situation of uh, fee hikes in these institutions. Can you tell us under what circumstances will you prevent a fee hike? I am Bugalo. Chairman, that means they would not be allowed to raise their fees. The problem is under the existing system. Well, Chairman, Chairman. Under our proposal, we will sign an agreement with the institutions with um, specifications on their school fee adjustment mechanism. If they do not follow our agreements, we might not grant, we might stop granting them the subsidies. If there is an agreement, the FC should have access to the details. We are talking about $1.2 billion, but um, some institutions might face a higher intake and um, they might have an incentive or pressure to raise their fees. So you should have a mechanism um, w w with a cap on the school fees. Do you have such, fl such plans? I don't quite understand what Dr. Cheng meant. We are looking at the next four years, and um, 
fees might be raised based on inflation and other factors. So, um, are you going to cons are you looking at um, rises within a specific range, or would you not allow rises at, at all? Or would they only be allowed to raise their fees based on inflation? There must be a mechanism. You said agreements would be signed. So um, would a cap be set based on the inf inflation in the next four years? And um, would it be um, based on the um, funding by the Education Bureau, or would it depend on the institution itself? We need to know the logic. Chairman. In our agreements with the institutions, we have made it clear that um, within the range of the CCPI changes, adjustments to the school fees would be allowed within a specific range. But if they exceed that range, the EDP, the EDB's approval is required before they can raise their fees. So um, the um, there would be um, safeguards within this mechanism. Mr. Roy Kwong, the beneficiaries certainly would not object to your proposal, but today we are discussing education policy. The um, associate degree system was introduced in the year 2000, and you said there would be reviews. The reality is that um, over the years, when you look at um, students who were admitted to associate degree programs, they have been suffering. If you know the situation, you would know that associate degree holders are in an embarrassing situation. Sometimes they would be treated like secondary school graduates. And um, this is reflected in the um, starting salaries of our university graduates. Nothing changed over the last 10 years. We must admit that um, this is a point of failure of our education system. Today, we are discussing the um, priority initiatives. So you are ignoring associate degree holders or IV program students. The secretary said you are going to conduct a study of our policy if this is what will happen, you are granting a subsidy of thirty thousand dollars for self-financing undergraduate programs. It's not. It's really not about the amount of subsidy, but on um, whether the. Um, programs or the qualifications would be useful to the graduates. If this is what you will continue to do, a few years later we will find out that money is not the problem. You need some monitoring. You need to monitor the situation. You said you would monitor their school fees. So um, what do you think about their programs? Um, the programs <coughs> in some institutions are indeed useful, but some not. So um, in terms of monitoring the programs um, from institutions outside of the um, eight universities, what have you done? I think um, you have mixed up associate degree and bachelor's degree programs for bachelor's degree programs. In terms of academic attainment, they must um, go through um, strict assessment. And um, when a self-financing institution um, convenes such programs, they must obtain the um, approval of the executive in council. We have been discussing this item for more than eight hours, and um, there have been redundancies. And um, we have had um, 46 questions on the um, self-financing um, undergraduate programs. As for the funds, we have discussed it 16 times. The number of um, teacher places in primary and secondary schools 10 times. And um, we also discussed special education needs. So I think um, 
it's about time. I will read out the names of the remaining um, members. They will have three minutes each. The um, let me read out the names of members who can still speak. You have repeated this point a number of times. If you can promise in in writing that um, the items will be passed, and if you can promise not to filibuster, then a lot of people will be willing to come back. I think we can leave it after the meeting. But um, I have no plans to introduce extra meetings. Please press the button if you would like to speak. I'm about to draw the line. Please press the button. We still have a final round. If this continues, we cannot vote on this item. We um, do not want to um, upset Mr. Yu Kin Yun from the education sector. Mr. Wan, Chairman, this is problematic. Well, you speculated on our motives while I'm speaking for myself. I did not filibuster. I didn't say anything redundant. Your categorization was not accurate. Um, you said um, there were more than um, 40 um, questions on tertiary education. Well, you never agreed with me. You have been unfair. You speculated on my motivation. I request you to um, take back your words. Please do not um, stand in the way of the meeting. I. This is a point of order. I will never take my words back. I want you to um, stop yelling. This is. We are entering the final round. Miss Collier Mo. You mentioned Mr. Yip Kin Yun because he represents education. You said um, you were um, concerned that he might have a heart attack. I think this is inappropriate. So when we talk about welfare affairs, are you going to call out um, Mr. Xiu Ka Chun? No, it was just a light-hearted remark. If you, I would not take back my my words, but um, I will not um, talk about it later. You know, I was just kidding. So don't be too serious. So um, we could do the same in the future. You know, we could do the same. We could say the same in the fi in the future. So I would take my words back, so that um, because I don't want to enter into an argument, I will read out the names. After that, we will um, enter the final round. Dr. K. K. Kwok. Um, Mr. James Ho, um, Dr. Priscilla Leung, um, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, Mr. Yuka Chun, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, Mr. Elvin Young, Mr. Roy Kwong. And um, I will talk about the um, speaking times in a moment. So um, after that, we will have a final round. So I'm trying to be lenient. We still have a number of items to deal with. Mr. Ray Chen, Mr. Kenneth Leung, Mr. Lam Shateng. This week is not on the microphone. Based on um, the number of times you have spoken, um, well, Mr. Kent Lung would have five minutes because um, he never spoke. You you spoke three times already, so you will get two minutes followed by three minutes. First, Mr. Kent Lung, five minutes. Chairman, I will not repeat what's been said. We um, need to give choices to the consumers or students. This is important. Mr. Abraham Shack um, talked about Milton Friedman's um, school of thought, and you are trying to implement the priority initiatives, and um, you did not think things over on um, how the system should operate. The key is to um, give options to parents and students. We wrote a lot about the education voucher or healthcare voucher systems. And um, it's about the um, options for the students and teachers. 
you said some institutions would enjoy an advantage, and um, perhaps you are referring to um, those who perform well. You are um, you talk about the concept of domination in the market, and um, if um, there is any domination, it's because of the government in a perfectly competitive market. You should allow choices for the consumers. You should allow the service users to have real choices. Would it, is this an oligopoly? I don't see this is a case. Um, we have eight institutions and I don't see any collusion among these eight institutions. These institutions are competing among themselves instead of colluding with each other. For the um, self-financing programs, um, they adopt all sorts of approaches, and um, some institutions work with universities from Australia. So um, this is a perfectly competitive market. Dr. Sheng Sheng Tai said, "We cannot analyze education um, as a market because education has its mission. But in recent years, the government has adopted a market-oriented approach when um, dealing with education. But um, from a market perspective, I think the government's analysis is wrong." You might think that this is an oligopoly, but I find this a perfectly competitive market. You said some institutions enjoy an advantage. I think um, those advantages were created by the government through administrative measures, but I do not see this as an oligopoly. If this um, package is passed, can you give us a timeline? on when the um, mode of subsidy and scope of the associate degree program would be reviewed. Can you give us a timeline? Chairman, I never talked about collusion or monopoly, and I merely said that in the um, tertiary institution sector, there are subsidized and self-financing programs. As we said in the paper, if um, members support the um, priority initiatives, we will review um, the role of self-financing programs, and we will and we will review the um, bachelor's degree and associate degree programs. And we will look at the government's level of participation in these programs and um, whether um, it would, whether there would be adjustments. So I cannot offer a timeline at this point because we are only at a preliminary stage of consideration. This will certainly be an area of focus for us. Mr. Lam Shakteng, four minutes. Chairman, I want to follow up on the issue I discussed with the Secretary just now. For mainland students, For bachelor's program or master's program um, students in Hong Kong and the um, percentage of mainland students, the government said that we have 15,000 um, local students in bachelor's programs. And um, for the rest, the government um, would provide separate resources. The, the government um, does not offer, does not um, allocate resources on that. I want to confirm a um, basic fact with the secretary. 
for bachelor's or master's programs in university, we are not just talking about the amounts of um, resources with the programs. Whether you study bachelor's program, master's, or doctorate programs, you would have facilities such as hostels and other other student facilities, and you would have teaching, teaching land resources, etc. And these are all public resources. Would um you would you be able to recover the full costs in the past? Reports of the um, public accounts committee pointed out that um there's a serious shortage of student hostel places. If not um for the mainland students in Hong Kong, the um shortage wouldn't be so serious. So um we are talking about a lot of public resources. And in in some cases costs would be recovered. I think this is a very narrow interpretation from the um in the aspect of courses. We have invested substantial resources including land and infrastructure for the universities. Uh, are you saying that the um resources of local students would not be affected if that's the case? All of them can um live in um or stay in student hostels. So how would you explain that? Thank you very much. I somewhat agree with Mr. Lam in terms of direct investment and um we have no um direct um we do not allocate resources directly for um overseas um students but we must realize that internationalization is an important aspect for our universities so um when promoting internet internationalization by admitting mainland or foreign students this is significant for our local students so for indirect investments well um i don't have much time left secretary if it's real internationalization i would support you fully now 70 more than 70% of the students are from the mainland and for masters program or above i think 90 or 80 to 90% of the students are from the mainland so are you talking about internationalization or mainland mainlandization so please stop talking about internationalization mr jeremy tam 3 minutes for the subsidy of $30,000 for self-financing programs if um, they are also covered by the um, Continual Education Fund. So um, would the um, CEF places be um, taken away? What would be the arrangement? Chairman, as I know, we are talking about two different um, systems and they do not contradict with one another. I went online and checked the um, scope covered by CEF and um, for poly use speed they are offering a bachelor's degree program and it's on the list so I just want to clarify would any um Self-financing undergraduate programs organized um, by an institution outside of the eight universities be um, on the list of CEF as well. What we are proposing will not affect the operation of the CEF, so it will just continue with what it has been doing. In other words, it seems that there is a question of double benefits. Previously, a course 
uh, could meet the conditions and there was the need, and so CAF was granted. Now, if somebody can apply for the CEF as well as get the thirty thousand dollars for the same program, won't you say that it is a matter of double benefits, Mr. Chairman? The two programs, I mean, the two schemes, have different objectives. Uh, the CEF uh, program would also be subject to a tuition fee ceiling. Yes, it has been kept at $10,000, and it also depends on the actual amount of expenditure. For an undergraduate program, of course, it will exceed $10,000. The most he can get will be $30,000. Well, there are two different schemes. Ours won't affect uh, the other scheme, so it's up to the student to see which scheme uh, he's entitled to, as long as the conditions are met, he will. In other words, some programs would benefit from both the CF as well as the $30,000 subsidy, right? Well, let me say this. A person may meet the requirements under both schemes, and he may be able to get the subsidies from both schemes. It isn't a matter about um, whether a particular program qualified under the uh, specific schemes. Now, press the button if you would like to ask uh, questions for the last round. I've got more than 10 members' names on the list. I'm really worried that we can't finish the scrutiny today. Um, if you don't accede to the um, sort of uh, cutting short of the speaking time down to three, two, or one minute, then I'm afraid we can't finish today. Uh, be time conscious, otherwise we're not doing justice to the public. Now, um, Dr. Helena Wong, you have said that perhaps we should dispense with voting in relation to the proposal for the three hospitals. It would be a pity if we can't get to such uh, topics. Dr. Priscilla Leung, in terms of integrated education, I just wondered if you can cover the ethnic minorities. Many local schools are willing to take on board EM students. I want to know if such schools can get more resources so as to enable uh, the admission of EM students so that good no local schools uh, can offer a helping hand to the EM students. In future, we should also extend the coverage to the self-financing programs of the HUGC funded universities. Some of them are more popular. I need to declare interest. Probably the City U will be involved because City U is going to run a veterinary science program. We have to take into account the needs of the market. Young people will be interested. And finally, I think what we are being prescribed is a painkiller. I think what follows should be a body check so that you know uh, where and how you should enhance the uh, sort of um, policies. Uh, mater teaching materials should be revised. There should be reforms uh, in all sorts of ways. Perhaps you should uh, have dedicated staff to fill out the forms so that they can meet the requirements of your bureaucracy, so that the teaching staff can focus their attention on teaching and dedicate all the time to the students. I'll stop here. I will support the paper. Next, Dr. Helena Wong, two minutes. Chair, I draw the attention of the administration to the following. Just now, I said that the administration is being selective. You have picked 14 institutions only. But you're not going to subsidize the self-financing programs of the HUGC universities. If you ever assist um, the impact, I'm afraid that the government has underestimated the negative impacts. Can you promise that you will have a review soon? Because programs 
which used to stand an advantage will be dealt will be dealt with a great blow. There will be spate of dismissals of teaching staff, and then student number will not be adequate to start the courses, and then the programs will will need to go, and then. Are you going to do anything to reverse the trend? Are you going to do any remedial measures uh, using the remaining one point four billion dollars? Chair, uh, regarding the um, self financing programs of the eight universities, most of the courses are AD courses or SD courses. There are about fourteen thousand places. Um, there are only one thousand degree courses. Uh, that fall within the self financing sector. So I think A D and S D courses account for the majority of the self financing programs of the H U G C universities. We are also concerned about their case like uh, lawmakers, so we did uh, try to find out how many undergrad programs uh, have been organized by the A UGC funded universities. Um, initial replies have shown that they're going to have a similar number of programs as last year. Fernando Zhang, two minutes. He's being self contradictory. We're saying that we should provide a subsidy to those who can meet uh, who can meet the, U uh, the university entrance requirements. We used to have over 10,000 students who can meet the basic requirements, and yet they haven't been offered a place. You should have increased the number of submitted places, but you would never agree uh, to the proposal. You need to be fair. When it comes to submitted places, the government is subsidizing 80% of the tuition cost. For all those students who meet the basic requirements, Irrespective of the program that they choose uh, in the self financing sector, uh, you should um, subsidize up to 80% of the tuition fees. Now, it is said that uh, the administration cannot sort of um, um, interfere with the tuition fee levels, but in fact, in your answers, uh, you have said that uh, you have a say. So, in other words, you can control the cost. Why don't you simply provide an 80% subsidy to the uh, students in terms of the tuition fees? Why are you capping it at $30,000? Secretary, we talk about controlling the rate of increase in the future. This is different from looking at the cost of each program and then subsidizing um, the students up to 80% of the cost. Now, for the self financing sector in higher education, of course, I know the range uh, starts with $50,000 up to $100,000 or so. The average would be seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. For us to come up with $30,000, so if you are enrolled with a uh, undergraduate program in the self financing sector, if you get $30,000, then it means that it is comparable to the UGC uh, programs. No, it is unfair. For UGC place, it will need $200,000. Um, Mr. Xu, you have time to speak. Yesterday, when Mrs. Carrie Lam met the media, Mrs. Carrie Lam said that the administration paid for the brand making of the eight UGC um, institutions, so it will be unfair to extend the scope. I want to comment on the unfairness of the three point six billion dollars. Now, if you are with a UGC funded program or if you are with a self financed program, it is unfair. I'm talking about the um, inequality between the AD courses as well as the UGC funded courses. I've got a paper from the bureau. Between the 1st of July up to now, uh, I would like to talk about the uh, organizations met by the Secretary. Seventy uh, groups have been uh, sort of um, uh, seen by him. Uh, I hope you have really seen all of them, 70 organizations, but all of them are school sponsoring bodies. Um, we haven't got any parents groups, uh, youth groups, or student representatives. Um, some members have already said that you need to uh, consult the students, you need to consult the young people, you need to consult the parents. Now, 
um, today, many uh, teachers have been saying that they're very worried. They would like to see the proposal endorsed. But some parents have also uh, declared that they're against um, the proposal because the $3.6 billion won't be spent directly on the students, in particular secondary school students, uh, primary school students, as well as the associate degree um, students. So please uh, pay attention to this concern. Secretary, I have heard uh, Mr. Hsu's uh, point. Um, all the time, we have been channeling the subvention to the schools and school sponsoring bodies. Mr. Hsu, uh, sorry, Mr. Andrew Wen, uh, I'll be brief. Um, you talked about Milton Friedman. But I have also talked about this point. I think it is not a matter of money following the people. You are imposing restrictions. You have resorted to administrative means to redistribute the resources. Let me not dwell on any debate with you. Can the administration give an undertaking? Today, so much has been said. The SEN has said, uh, the Secretary for Education has said that he had hurt, he has hurt us. Is he going to take a second look of the matter? And then for Fernando Zhang's point, I think it is meaningful. Don't give us the absolute figures. Just look at the percentage, like subsidizing the cost up to 70 80 uh, percent. Now, the average uh, tuition fee would be $65,000. You're offering $30,000. Can you um, raise the amount? Uh, because your current proposal can't even cover half of the sum. And are you going to expand the scope so that vocational training uh, will also be covered? Like uh, IV, I think they have got very good uh, results uh, in training up uh, Western chefs as well as uh, traditional Chinese uh, cuisine uh, professionals. Are you going to cover the professional and vocational training education as well? Secretary, for IV, most of the high diploma programs have been subvented by the administration. Chair, can Mr. Wen briefly repeat his question? I thought he has been listening to me. Yes, I've been listening, but uh, you asked too many questions. Are you going to do this on a proportionate basis? Sorry, can I get a few more seconds? I think like uh, the answer given to Fernando Zhang, now $65,000. Well, currently uh, we are proposing $30,000, and at the end of the day, they only <coughs> pay $35,000, so much less than the fees for a uh, subvented course. Mr. Wu Chiwai. I'm also on. I have been asking questions on university education. Now I come to special education. And what about kindergarten education? You have said that the support should come from the social welfare department. Did you ever talk to the social welfare department? What about the support to students with special educational needs in the kindergarten sector of the school system? It is clear that for the primary and secondary schools, you have said that uh, educational resources should be channeled um, to the students. Now, for kindergartens, it is not within your portfolio, but are you going to talk to the SWD? Because at a young age, it will be good for students with a special education needs to be given the right support. Chair, yes, just now I said that for students or children under the age of six with special education needs, their care will be taken up by the Wealth, Labor and Welfare Bureau. But then uh, the whole government is concerned. We have a pilot uh, scheme. NGOs can have an outreaching program. They go to kindergartens so that uh, pupils with SENs uh, will be given assistance within the kindergartens. So the administration has been working as a team, though there is some internal division of labor, but it's not going to affect the clients. For Education Bureau, we will be focusing on the training of kindergarten teachers so that they get better training and then they know how 
to help uh, pupils with SENs. You mean covering kindergarten teachers as well? Yes. Claudia Mo, two minutes. Thank you, Chair. I've been listening since yesterday. Be it Mrs. Kerry Lam or the Secretary, they have been emphasizing that the package on the table has been the result of endless consultation going on for months. In particular, uh, as to why you don't give thirty thousand dollars to the self financing programs of the eight UGC universities, you have said that the heads have been consulted and they didn't mind. I think the best answer comes from Abraham Shah. Of course, they don't care because they won't care. It's got nothing to do with them. Exactly, thirty thousand dollars. You don't give the money to the universities. The money will go to the students. When you have a student enrolled, then the money will be given to the student to pay for part of the fees. So as far as the university itself is concerned, the difference is not much. So can you call this detailed consultation? It is unfair to make such a comment. Let me repeat my earlier question. You haven't answered my question. I think it's a matter of fate accompli. We can't expect any changes today. Can you give an undertaking? That is, uh, can you expand the scope in the October policy address? That is, the $30,000 subvention be offered to the students of self-financing programs of the eight UGC uh, universities? Secretary, for the policy address, I don't think I can give under undertaking. We still need time to look at it. And what is important is that it is the CE's policy address. But then this is your portfolio. Uh, for the views expressed um, in the past few days, I uh, will certainly uh, bear them in mind. Elvin Young, two minutes. Thank you, Chair. I want to follow up on the arrangements regarding Sankos. Understand that a UK expert will be invited to come to Hong Kong. Can you not give us more details? Would it be one expert or a number of experts? How many of them? And how long will he or they be staying? And how many local um, teachers uh, can be trained during any one visit? I will defer to my colleague. We are talking about one UK expert who is experienced in this field. Uh, the scholar will come over to Hong Kong to give us the training. The scholar will continue uh, to provide the training to us if the 1718 program is successful. And the Sankos will also have sharing sessions so that uh, the cooperation can be enhanced. Chair, if I may understand more. Now, the Bureau talks about having one expert. Um, for how long um, can we sort of tie in with the academic year of the local school system? Uh, what about school holidays? Uh, two weeks um, per visit, and there will be talks and workshops for the Sankos. And we hope that. The local teacher training bodies will know more about this, so there will be arrangements to enhance um, exchanges. So we hope that if, if, at the end of the day, we can provide local training to the Sankos. So, Chairman, would the administration consider that two or three years after the funding has been passed, a review will be conducted and to give us a written response in the third year? Meaning that uh, the original review schedule for 2017-18 will still be conducted, and upon completion of the whole Sanko scheme, we'll also conduct another review. Mr. Ray Chen, paragraph 4B of the paper about providing $5,000 subsidy to eligible students uh, for furthering studies in the mainland. Last week at the education panel, I asked why subsidy cannot be provided to students furthering studies abroad. 
because uh, the administration's reply is that at the moment there is already a similar arrangement. The only difference is that uh, now students pursuing studies in the mainland will not be subject. Sub- Well, will not be subject to any means test, and we have um, regular liaison mechanism with the universities in the mainland. But you need to understand that for the needy students, in order to address the issue of intergenerational poverty, uh, you need to do something about it. For students with better means, they will be able to study um, abroad anyway. But in fact. For scholarship programs, for example, the Belt and Road Scholarship, you can also um, get a recognition of uh, universities abroad. But why is it that this subsidy only covers mainland universities? You may say that um, this is the amount of resources you have at the moment, but can you undertake that in the future? You will expand the scope. To uh, universities outside the uh, MUSSS scheme, well, as Mr. Chan mentioned, we have scholarship uh, programs allowing students to study in top-notch universities abroad, such as the um, scholarships or excellence. Um, but for this proposal, it only covers. Local students who wish to pursue further studies in the mainland, and this is uh, the result of an arrangement um, between the government and the mainland. We have two more 37A motions, so um, please speed up, um, Mr. Shokachun. Three minutes, Chairman. I have this book. Uh, With me, and it's written by a mainland university student in 2013. It's a post 90s uh, views and critics uh, reflection on the mainland education system, and the title is "I Won't Forgive uh, China's Education System." And uh, I bought it online. Um, the Secretary, you can also um, buy a copy and uh, read about the criticisms coming from this student on uh, the uh, education system in the mainland. The the criticism doesn't come from the school management bodies or teachers, but from the students. And we have sub-degree uh, program students who could be writing. This uh, book titled "I Won't Forgive for the Education System in Hong Kong," because um, do you think that the three point six three point six billion dollars subsidy would really help address inequality? Because the last, not the, the, the least, would still remain at the bottom of the chain. I have been in the sub-degree sector for over a decade. Many sub-degree students. Come from、uh, grassroots families.、Uh, they also need to take up part-time jobs to、um, repay their heavy student loans, and they are the most needy groups when it comes to financial assistance. You talk about the positioning of your policy, but the point is,、um, the position is wrong at the outset when the policy is formulated, because you have not targeted the most needy groups who. Needed the social mobility most. They not only face a problem of heavy student loans, they also face dif- different stigmatization in the community. They are so-called the associate degree holders and not the real undergraduates, and they don't know whether they actually they have、um, actually progressed from、uh, secondary school, whether they're in the post-secondary education.、Um, Institution or not, when we talk about university students, they when you, when you say that、uh, you want to improve the uh, uh, condition of university students, they don't know how to respond because they don't know whether to regard themselves as a tertiary uh, education student. And in the eyes of employers and other people in the community, the same applies, and they get so. Uh, they get such a low pay after graduation that、uh, it is、um, really regrettable. According to a consultancy study, it clearly shows 
And, it, and this study also comes with recommendations, but you have not uh, implemented any of them. Your time is up, Dr. Fernando Zhang. Three minutes. First of all, I want to point out that Mrs. Carrie Lam didn't just come into office yesterday. The education sector has experienced so many catastrophes. Uh, right after she has assumed office, she can't sort of redeem her sins by uh, proposing these measures uh, and dish out $3.6 billion. The problems cannot simply be addressed because over the years, insufficient places in the universities have caused um, the loss of opportunities of so many youths. Instead of um, providing subsidies, you refuse to provide more university places. And it's to call it internationalization, it is nothing but mainlandization because you were, you have only been allowing more mainland students to take up university places. And now you talked about the proposal, $3.6 billion, and if the proposal is not passed, several 10,000 um, uh, students would uh, be disappointed. But you should take a more serious attitude. No place around the world would get in the way of um, youths furthering their studies in universities, except Hong Kong. Instead of more subsidized places, you resort to uh, associate degree programs and you rely on the market force. And that's the result, that's the cause of so many catastrophes. We have students taking up uh, associate degree courses with heavy student loans. And over the past 10 years, there, were, there have been uh, over 100,000 students, eligible students, uh, who should be enrolled in universities. But instead, you have come up with um, the propo this proposal, not more subsidized places. Back then, I already um, championed for more assisted, more support for SEN students. Now you're still not sure what the Sanko should do. Well, we have been making the suggestion for so many years. You, um, however, still have no idea um, what level of post this should be. It's not an entry post. It's, it's uh, the post of a coordinator. And that's the result of inequality. And then the pro-establishment camp today criticizes us for getting in the way. This is not true. We are fulfilling our duties as members of this council to carefully examine the proposal. If you talk about so many important proposals, why can't you have additional meetings? Why are you traveling abroad and instead accuse us of getting in your the, your way? Dr. Fernando Zhang, you do not have any say on this matter. Well, don't talk about this because when I asked whether we should have additional meetings on the 20th or 21st, uh, you you said no. So uh, you have no right to criticize me. Mr. Wu Chiwai, three minutes. I think the major issue here is uh, uneven distribution of resources, not the lack of resources. Um, the other member asked about internationalization or mainlandization of our universities. I remember every time when we talked about a uh, place in the university, the cost on average is $200,000. But the secretary uh, very often would say that uh, we can charge a different level of fees for uh, mainland or non-local students so as to recover part of the cost. But in fact, um, the uh, fees only amount to one hundred and ten to one hundred and forty thousand dollars. You can't say that you have fully recovered the cost of a place. And according to many other members, if we are considering. Helping eligible students to get a place in the tertiary education institution. We should really think about what we can do about 
UGC funded places. In particular, for courses that uh, charges really high fees, such as engineering and uh, and the and the medical school, whereas for um, humanity subjects the fees are relatively lower. So something should be done uh, so that uh, students getting subsidized places can p get more assistance. Well, you have um, taken a step in 2018-19 school year. You are going to increase the number of um, articulation or top up places. But uh, I wonder if you can take the lead in conducting a research in this regard. Second point. The subsidy will be given to the self-financing institutions. But just now, I, my question was: uh, if there is any balance, would it uh, stay with the students, or would the balance be used for other purposes? If it's part of the resources for students, then secretary, you should really gauge. The result and consider providing more subsidized places. Yeah. Dr. K. K. Kwok, three minutes. Chairman, sometimes if you repeat the lie many times, it becomes truth. Every year we have several 10,000 students um, who are eligible with a result of 3322, then they should be enrolled in universities. At the moment, whether they're eligible um, for um, subsidies dependent on uh, their their result, school result, and this is not fair. You should not um, pack the uh, subsidy to their academic result. This is exactly what we have in the capacity. Ca ca capitalist society in Hong Kong: survival of the fittest. Those having good results, you can get a place in the most pre prestigious university in Hong Kong. For those not getting good results in exams, they get a subsidy of $30,000. The whole policy is being watered down. Why don't you conduct a review first before implementing the proposal? Or even before the review, for those not getting any subsidy from you, they have been innocent. How can you determine before conducting a review that they do not deserve any subsidy? You talked about um, the independence of the uh, institutions, but in fact, the UGC can also take up this role. I think fairness is important or equality is important. Otherwise, justice is not seen to be done and uh, there is also a divide in society because there is a divide between the self-financing institutions and the self-financed courses run by the eight UGC-funded universities, and there is also a divide among students. They are all victims of a policy that is half-baked. Perhaps Mrs. Carrie Lam has been um, too uh, fond of uh, disinfecting the government and boosting her popularity. I also hope that this proposal can be passed, but it is so flawed, and I'm sorry to say that we cannot support this proposal because it could have been done better. Now it's being destroyed in your hands. Mr. Jeremy Tam, I'd like to follow up on another point about providing more support to schools on information technology. A monthly subsidy of $25,000 would be dished out to schools 
so that an IT support professional can be engaged by each school, and 1,000 jobs will be created. It is expected. Well, this seems to be a simple matter, but at the same time, points A to G on page two of the of the paper, you mentioned that uh, apart from uh, engaging an IT professional, the money can also be used for um, other purposes, uh, such as uh, procurement of um, equipment and, for, and uh, software, etc., and that's in the, the enclosure. Well, so it seems that it goes against your policy objective. Originally, you said that um, by recruiting an IT professional, you can create 1,000 jobs, and then you say that uh, the resources can be deployed flexibly as appropriate. Well, perhaps uh, Mr. Tam is referring to Enclosure 3, Paragraph 5. And in fact, we have been um, giving this com composite information technology grant annually to schools, and it sets out how the resources can be spent. Uh, we're not talking about the subsidy to be provided in the second half of the year. We're only suggesting that the money could be spent on recruiting an IT support staff. For some schools, however, they may opt for um, engaging a contractor instead of directly employing an IT support staff. And on the whole, our estimation is that 1,000 jobs would be created. So simply put, the schools can either directly recruit an IT support staff or to purchase a service from a service provider. Well, let's say if the school hires service from a service provider, is there any safeguard? Let's say if it is set at the um, level of a computer operator too. I don't know how, what the sum will be. Let's say ten or twenty thousand dollars. Will there be any safeguard that uh, when the service is procured, the personnel should be physically present in the school and the staff should get a pay of at least twenty thousand dollars because you can you cannot uh, create jobs unless you stipulate these conditions secretary now when it comes to support we require the IT contractor to provide uh, support service but we have not stipulated the pay. Three minutes, Mr. Adiju. Chairman, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Fernando Jung. This morning, he stood. He uh, stood up, and uh, he insisted to express his dissatisfaction towards the um, disqualification of the four members, and he just showed me a picture of. Um, his staff in uh, in the office, and in fact, uh, his staff members are also standing up like us at the same time. Oh, please don't digress. Well, just now you um, criticized Dr. Fernando Zhang. You said that the uh, well. You also decided not to ask for additional meetings. So why are you criticizing us for not having additional meetings? Now, Chairman, you have been quite tolerant. You didn't stop me from speaking just now because we do have an urgent issue at hand. This is an urgent issue for the council as well as for the administration. We have an urgent situation here, so the circumstances have changed. The four former legislators are on the verge of bankruptcy, and um, the issue of by-election has not been made clear. If you do not return those legislators to the council and the public, the pro-establishment members here can all answer this question. If you 
um, want to um, restore some normality to our society, then we can all go one step further for the pro-establishment camp and carry lamb. How can we um, get back to a normal state? And um, if that's the case, I'm sure Dr. Fernando Chan would agree to extra meetings in the summer recess. We will certainly allow the important or the other important items to pass. So why isn't that possible now? This situation means that we cannot operate normally. So I think what you said was not fair because the circumstances have changed. We've always hoped that Leshko is not just a platform for asking questions, but also uh, a platform to um, wrestle back democracy bit by bit for the public. So I hope you can um, give a hand in um, solving this conundrum. Is that issue? The court's decision must be um, handled by the court. You cannot bundle this with our um, items which are related to the welfare of the people. This is not fair. So um, if the government does not give in, are you going to um, continue to disrupt the council? Go back and um, think about it. Of course, we must go on. This is not an appropriate occasion. So um so you are saying that um your principles are important but the um welfare of the people isn't This is the court's ruling so um we'll leave it to the court Mr. Leung Yuchong Chairman on the um $30,000 subsidy I'm sure the students would um find this a relief and this would facilitate their learning. For st students um, who cannot enjoy such subsidy, is this fair to them? The secretary said you will review the associate degree program system. And you said that even if um, the students are not subsidized, the ecology of the institu institutions would not be affected. So um, you have no plans to offer them such subsidy at this stage. But I'm not convinced on how this can alleviate the students' financial difficulties. Unless you are saying that um, you will um, learn from Germany and Switzerland in um, making tertiary education free. And um, in Germany and Switzerland, even overseas students can study for free. So you can see that they are trying to um, help students who really want to learn. We are talking about a knowledge economy in Hong Kong, and yet we are standing in the way of the students. If this is not discrimination, what is? Why are they being sacrificed? You did not explain this, and you could not tell us how um, you can offer them the chance to learn. You didn't tell us how you would tackle that. In terms of loans, can you give them a hand? And you did not make a direct promise. You only said you noted the suggestion. So um, what can the students do after the summer? You did not answer my question. And um, I asked questions about the parents. And again, you only noted the questions without giving an answer. For the Sankos, you are merely regularizing the arrangement. This, but this is not the solution. We need um, speech therapists and other professionals, and um, there's a shortage at this stage. You did not promise to introduce more specialists. So how can you enhance special education? 
the policy address is coming very soon. Can you promise that there will be substantial enhancements in these aspects in the policy address? It's better late than none. Mr. Alvin Young, three minutes. On the $3.6 billion funding application, the Civic Party has concerns on the um, $30,000 subsidy, and this would affect the ecology of self financing and um, subsidized institutions. We are not convinced by the government. And we do not think that this is the best arrangement for the aid institutions and um, the tertiary institution, the ter tertiary education landscape. Dr. Fernando Chang pointed out correctly that um, the government did not address this directly. To be fair, we have been fighting for the rights of SEN students and parents, and the government finally decided to respond. And um, it should have been in place a long time ago. So um, if you had done it a few years earlier, then um, a lot more students could benefit. In terms of investment on education, in um, the chief executive's first question and answer session here in early July, and um, after the handover, education expenditure was about um, 25 percent, and the um, percentage dropped to 20 percent recently. In any advanced place or or, or economy. Education um, expenditure should only um, go up as a percentage of GDP for the um, $3.6 billion funding or further funding in the future. I think um, we, we agree to that. Whether or not this proposal is passed today, the government should remain humble. They should consider parents and students, and the secretary should not treat education like a business. I think um, this is the only way The only way um, you can make up for what we didn't do in the last five years. We really wanted to support the um, proposal, but the Civic Party will cast an abstention vote. Ms. Claudia Mo, three minutes. You have school fee subsidies, and um, you can expect a rise in school fees from the institutions. A few days ago, I appeared on a radio show, and um, one of the hosts told me that um, her child is studying in a subsidized U or a UGC-funded institution, and. Um, they are already planning to raise the school fees since they are receiving subsidies. And um, we often talk about expensive rent in Hong Kong. So um, can we provide rental subsidy for grassroots family? And you said, no, it's not possible because the um, landlords would be encouraged to raise rent. What about rental control? Again, you said no because Hong Kong is a market economy, and um, you cannot um, regulate the values of or, or prices of properties. So um, if the institutions decide to raise school fees, you said that you are going to strike agreements with them. You said you will monitor changes in the CCPI, and you would not um, allow rises casually. Of course, the school fee increases would not be um, outrageous, but you did not um, 
you you cannot um, restrict the um, increase in school fee as, um, with regards to the CCPI. You mentioned the equipment in school, the um, hiring of overseas specialists or teachers, etc., and as such, the school fees must be raised. So um, we know that any increases in the fees must be approved by you. Now my question is about the mechanism. Assuming the school fee is increased from thirty thousand dollars per year to thirty-eight thousand, the um, eight thousand dollar increase um, is um, beyond the inflations, but. Um, after I give all my justifications, who will um, make a judgment or decision? At the end, the EDB would make a judgment. So is it yourself or would that be a panel? Chairman, our uh, team responsible for tertiary education, well, our colleagues, it, it's not a panel or a committee. So I want to know who will personally make the decision. Ms. Andrew Wan. I asked the secretary to review the situation of of um, VTC, and um, when I checked the VTC website, there there are at least nineteen self financing undergraduate programs, and they use a credit system. One hundred thirty two credits each credit um, costs six out um, two thousand seven hundred dollars, and the total would be. Um, Three hundred fifty thousand per year, or eighty or eighty nine thousand dollars per year, or three hundred fifty thousand in total. So um, this is what I'm asking about. Would this be expanded in the next stage? Would you um commit to a um review sooner instead of um having to wait a few years? Thank you very much. In my answer to Mr. Wan. We talked about the high diploma programs at U at VTC or Ivy. Most of them are subsidized, and um, Mr. Wan just talked about the self finance and the graduate programs at VTC. And in our proposal, these programs would be covered. As to a future review. We must realize that this is a significant issue, and this is only one of the issues we are thinking about. I do not think that the review can be completed by October, but um, we should be able to um, commence the study or review by that time. Mr. Ray Chan, three minutes. Chairman. The um, Lechko, um is in the middle of a storm. A war is taken out on the Democrats, and um, the um, election results are being overturned. Dr. Fernando Chang protested today, and um, he held the um, pictures of disqualified legislators, and um, he has shown tremendous restraint and discipline. We are scrutinizing new education resources, and um, we are trying our best to ask questions. And we have not made any um, um, moved any motions to adjourn. Of course, you would say that you are very disappointed. It's not that we have to um, pass whatever items proposed by the government. So um, you can see that we need a lot of time for each item, and even the pro establishment members spoke. Some pro establishment members would blame us, and um, this is something we cannot help. But I hope the public would understand our situation and the complexity of this issue. In enclosure 1, paragraph 4c, and um, the um, government expects 4,000 new and continuing students pursuing undergraduate programs in the mainland, but um, they did not explain. Did not um, specify the number of new students, and um, and 
in terms of the um, guideline of the admission of mainland students um, without needing to pass an examination in 2017 to 18, can um, the relevant information be included on the pamphlet? And students attaining 3C22 can receive a $5,000 subsidy every year, and the um, program should be more transparent and more information should be offered. And um, some of the um, figures might be um, fabricated. I saw some issues with the qualification of some mainland students. For um, we have a lot of students admitted from and um, university of low ranking. For example, um, Sanxia University ranked um, two hundred and eleven and. 200 students can be admitted. In other words, the university can receive 1 million in subsidy. But um, some university programs are even more sus suspicious or dodgy. And um, in a Guangdong Foreign Languages University, um, there will be uh, an intake of five. And um, the English subject is taught in Chinese. Your time's up. I will follow up on the um, question I asked in round two. The government said they negotiated with the eight UGC funded universities and they had no strong views or something to that effect. We are talking about choices for the students and we are not talking about whether the eight universities need help. If they have no comments, so if the students go for the eight universities, Mrs. Kerry Lam is saying she won't help these students. If you choose the eight universities, you would not receive help. Does it mean that the eight institutions would offer help themselves? If not, even for associate programs organized by the eight institutions, while well, the secretary has been saying that um, there is value in associate degrees, you are offering a subsidy of thirty thousand dollars for um, undergraduate programs in the eight, in. Um, eligible institutions and they some students are going for the eight institutions but they are not stupid well they can see what their parents or other people are doing and you are not offering the thirty thousand dollars subsidy to them and the secretary said the institutions have no strong views that's not my problem it's about students who want to get in, but they are not um, being helped by Carrie Lam. So um, do you have other measures to help them? If you do, then um, let us know what they are. If you can prom if you promise that the eight universities will provide a $30,000 scholarship, then it will, we are fine with that. And if Carrie Lam can um, ask some rich people to offer scholarships and it's a valid answer. Chairman, when I talked about the eight institutions, I was um, talking about whether our program would affect the um, self-financing programs by these eight institutions. It's not about the um, impact on students. Secretary. When we consider these issues or, or this program, we have to, we have to think about our intents, which is something I've explained already. You gave. Well, time is up. Let me 
declared that uh, we will immediately go into um, the debate under 37A. So come back in five minutes' time.